In this section of charts, we're going to introduce another transform called the unilateral Z-transform. This is very similar to how we dealt with the Laplace transform. We started off with a very general definition called the bilateral Laplace transform, and then we simplified it to what was called the unilateral Laplace transform when we dealt with a special class of signals. Same type of thing is going on here. The unilateral Z-transform is something that we can use if we want to restrict ourselves to working with right-sided signals or causal systems whose impulse response goes to the right, doesn't go to the left. So if we're going to work with signals that tend to start at zero and go to the right, we can work with the unilateral Z-transform. And this is kind of nice because basically what's going to happen is since we're using the unilateral Z-transform and we assume off the bat that everything goes to the right, we really don't worry about the region of convergence as much. We know it's going to be a region in the Z-plane outside of a circle, and that's just kind of implicit in the work that we do then. The Unilateral Z-transform is also very useful for solving difference equations. So just like the Laplace transform was useful for solving differential equations, we can use the unilateral Z-transform to solve difference equations that have some type of initial condition. Okay? So really, the only thing that's changing here, the unilateral Z-transform is a special case of the bilateral Z-transform, and it's a special case under the condition that we're assuming that all of our signals start at some time and go to the right. They don't go to the left. So now we know kind of the motivation for why we would want to use the unilateral Z-transform. Let's go ahead and state the definition, and here it is in the box. The unilateral Z-transform of some discrete time signal X of K is defined as follows. We still call it X of Z, and it's equal to the sum from 0 to infinity of X to the K, Z to the negative K. So Z is still a complex number in the complex plane, and this definition looks almost identical to our bilateral Z-transform. The only difference is that it starts at time K equals 0. In our original definition of the bilateral Z-transform, our starting point was minus infinity. We sum from minus infinity to infinity. Here we start at 0 and go to infinity. And if we want to be very clear, we can use this notation down here. Instead of saying x of k goes into the z domain, if we want to be very, very clear that we're using the unilateral z transform, instead of putting a z above the double arrow, sometimes we might put a z sub u to imply that we're using the unilateral z transform. So that is the definition of the unilateral z transform. Just about everything about it is the same as the bilateral z transform, except for this one minor little change right here. And also for the fact that when we talk about the region of convergence, we always know it's going to be something outside of a circle. We don't ever have anything inside of a circle because we can't go to the left. The only real difference between this and the bilateral Z-transform is when we start talking about its properties, and namely the shifting, time-shifting properties. The time-shifting properties for the unilateral Z-transform are the ones we really need to look at in terms of comparing it to the original transform, they're really the only ones that are different, so we'll do that next.